Not a great day. James, a horrible day, a typical risk-off day. We saw the market down by 1.9%. And today the market was about two things. First of all, the European debt situation, which really dominated today's trade. And secondly, the weaker PMI numbers coming out of China. In particular, it was the banks that were absolutely smashed. It was the worst performing sector. We saw the big four banks down 1.6% to 2.9%. And the banks really being hit on two angles. First of all, worries about our wholesale funding funding costs going up and the impact on banks' profitability. And secondly, uh, the, the, their housing asset portfolio or their portfolio, which is highly skewed towards Australian housing and which is seen to be fueled by China's growth. And of course, we've got the weaker China PMI numbers, so, so some concerns around that. But all sectors were trading low. If I can bring up the market map, it will show you red across the board. You'll see that all sectors were trading lower. The consumer discretionary sector also worth a mention. In terms of percentage change, it, it outperformed the market down by 1.3 percent but we've consistently seen discretionary stocks falling over the past two years and that means stocks like Harvey Norman, Meyer, uh, also JB Hi-Fi if we have a look at Billabong, Pacific Brands all trading at two year lows so unfortunately those retailers not looking too good. You mentioned it as well uh, my, uh, Mike McCarthy, uh, Mike Smith mentioned it this idea of wholesale funding we did see of course Moody's last week downgrade the banks largely because of what they said was this reliance on those wholesale funding markets. Is that becoming more of an issue or is it, is it becoming less of an issue? I thought we'd sort of moved a little bit beyond that post-GFC. It's coming back into focus because of the European debt situation and fears that if we do see restructuring in terms of Greece, we are going to see an impact in terms of some of the other countries and it is going to have a domino effect and affect wholesale funding costs. We have a look at Australian banks, around about 60% of its funding costs are funded through retail deposits, which means 40% of it is reliant on wholesale funding. So that is a pretty big chunk, chunk compared to its international peers. Of course, the banks, though, if you have a look at it from pre global financial crisis to now that's a much lower reliance and in fact the banks have been putting in place certain measures to try and diversify their funding in fact retail funding is a lot more they've also been increasing the maturities uh, of their of their bonds and they've had a number of factors in play but if you have a look at what drives the bank's share price first of all it's profitability in terms of profitability what market and analysts look for are funding costs or expenses as well as demand and on the demand side we've seen a about $80 billion worth of lending disappear from the peak November 2008 as businesses and retail clients all pay down their debt. So we have seen that debt really being wilted away on the demand side. We're seeing concerns about expenses because of wholesale funding. And the other side of the equation is their asset book, their portfolio, their asset portfolio. And if you have a look at Australian banks, they are exposed to the Australian housing market, which is seen as reliant on China and those PMI numbers but certainly, um, I guess, lighting some concern over uh, that asset portfolio. And we've started to see weaker housing numbers here in Australia as well. Low volume. Look, the risks look to the downside at the moment. Last week was a positive one because we saw a number of technical levels being reclaimed. But unfortunately, this morning, very early on, we saw them being broken. 200-day moving average, which is a significant long-term trend uh, indicator for traders, was broken in the first few minutes of trade. That was at 4,720. And that 61.8% uh, retracement level, which is the golden ratio at 4688, also broken. So as Mike mentioned, uh, the low of last week was 4,640. 41 points. We managed to hold that, which is a positive. If we see a bounce from here, there is some hope for the market. But if we continue to see weakness in the market, it does look like that correction still in play. And if we have a look at that market correction, if we have a look at the market correction, which now started in April. We're around about six weeks into that correction now, so it is a pretty long one. And we've seen a decline of around about 7% so far. Some interesting uh, a note from JP Morgan in terms of uh, the takeover landscape here in Australia, suggesting that Sundance Resources, top of the list. Would you agree? And I suppose who would be the potential suitors? I guess this was always expected. The next catalyst for Sundance Resources is really finding this strategic partner to develop 
its uh, assets in Africa. And if we have a look, Sundance coming out to say that there's a number of different buyers interested, and that's really heated up takeover speculation. But really what Sundance is looking for is a strategic partner taking up to a 50% stake to try and develop the infrastructure. I mean, this is an absolutely massive project. It's very hard to find a resource like this, independent, high grade, um, low cost, and the quality of it is just incredible. If we have a look at uh, what they're aiming for. They're hoping to get this up by 2014, and they're aiming for a 35 million tons per annum project. Now, if we have a look at some of the other takeover deals that have happened recently, we know Extrada in the region bought Spear Minerals for $514 million. And if we have a look at Spear, their uh, project was only 6 million tons per annum. So this is a huge project from Sundance Resources. Not surprising to see a lot of interest in this resource. All the big guys are in this area. And Sundance having a, a very high quality. I mean, for the first 10 years, the grades coming out of this is expected to be 62.5%. And the costs are, are going, it looks like it's going to be in the lowest quarter of our global producers. And in fact, if they do manage 35 million tons per annum by 2014, it will put them in the top 10 producers in the world.